Welcome to another episode of Pickler the Podcast. I am your co-host, Stacey Townsend, along with John, the People's Champ, Davison. John, no chit-chat today. We're going to dive right in because we have a very special guest who was not a pickleball pro. He's not in the pickleball world, not a pickleball expert like you and me. But John, I think we are uh, on the verge of being intellectually intimidated because our guest today has a lot of expertise in the sports industry, in the sports business, which I think is going to be really impactful and shed some light on pickleball. And maybe we can learn some things to make sure the sport reaches its highest potential. Uh, so to give a little more color, uh, the sports expert is a senior lecturer at MIT. Yes, I said MIT, Sloan of S School of Business management, focusing on digital transformation and innovation in sports, media, and entertainment. He's published three books, hosts a sports podcast called Counterpoints, and he's also previously served as the director of social media and marketing at ESPN. So with that, I'd like to welcome Ben Shields to the podcast. Welcome, Ben. Thank you, Stacy and John. I really appreciate you having me. As you mentioned, I'm an outsider to the pickleball world, but for the last few months, as I've gotten to know the community a little bit. It's just been so welcoming and I really appreciate you both having me on your show. Yeah. Oh, we're I've so excited to excited. have you. Yeah. Excellent. I, as we were getting on, I, 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 you know, I just mentioned to you, Ben, I said, our viewer, our fans, as we like to call them, no, John never prepares, but John prepared <laughs> for this one. I, I'm always usually a fly by the seat kind of guy, you know, I just wing it. But um, I was like, well, you know, this guy seems pretty smart, so I got to do my homework. <laughs> well, <laughs> just a lot of hard work. And listen, I think if you're nicknamed the people's champ, you got to have the ability <laughs> to prepare every now and then. So thanks for doing that. For yeah, that conversation. <laughs> definitely. So, Ben, why don't you start by telling us what you've kind of learned about the pickleball space and what your initial thoughts are? Yes, absolutely. I am fascinated by pickleball in part because it has such a strong participation base. And mm -hmm. if, you're a store, if you're a sport looking to grow, having that as an asset, I think is a major positive. Mm -hmm. I also appreciate about pickleball, how social it is, right? It's not just mm -hmm. the sport, but it's also the social glue around the sport and how it brings people together. So I appreciate that. And I also like how accessible it is. You can easily learn how to play very quickly and compete. And as part of that, I appreciate the quick format, right? It's not a four and a half hour, five hour engagement. Although it could be, I guess, if you played a bunch of games in a row. Right. But for the average participant, it can be a really short and effective way to get a workout and also have some fun with your friends. So I really like the fact that it's a strong participatory sport and for some of the reasons that, that I've cited. What's super interesting about the sport now, and I hope we're going to spend a lot of time on this in our conversation, is you've mm -hmm. got this great participatory base and it's growing through the roof, especially here in the U.S., how can this sport become more of a spectator sport, right? Where fans will actually spend time watching other people play pickleball. And that's where I think it gets really, really interesting for the future of this sport. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree with you that that is the next step, right? To become a spectator sport. And I think a lot of people have all these ideas, right? That maybe they're, you know, they're not as educated as someone like you, Right. Um, so I think we will be going into quite a bit of that. Uh, Stacey, I'll let you kick it off with some of them questions, but um, definitely we, we, we need more fans engaged, you know, mm -hmm. to, because right now, a lot of the tournaments, the people that are in the stands are just there to play as well. Right. right? So it's, it's hard for us to get like a lot of people on the YouTube channels and, um, you know, just showing up to the sporting events and making it more of an atmosphere. Mm hmm. So what, what's the number one thing you think these fans or spectators are looking for uh, if you draw parallels to other sports? Like what what's pickleball maybe missing for to draw in this fan engagement? 
Well, the good news is, is there is some research about why people become fans in the first place. And mm -hmm. we can talk about a little bit of that. I mean, one of the main drivers of fandom is a family connection, right? Mm -hmm. Your parents were a fan of a sport or a team, and then that passes down to you. Another reason why people connect with sports is because of a place, right? They're from a certain hometown. I live outside of Boston, right? You're from there. You're going to be fans of those teams, right? And then another way that people become fans is through star power, right? Mm -hmm. So I may not like the sport or know too much about the sport, but here's this amazing individual who is dominant and has a great personality. And now I all of a sudden become a fan of that sport. There are many good examples of stars over the years. Just because we're taping this during Masters weekend, we can easily cite Tiger Woods as one of those examples, right? Just mm -hmm. by his sheer star power, he has brought more people into the game as fans, as well as participants, by the way. So I think that's another lever that could be pulled family, place, star power. Other interesting ways that people become fans of sports, you know, sometimes there are other forms of participation, not just playing the sport in real life, but you think about the NFL and the impact that Madden had on the growth of the NFL. I, for one, have never played tackle football, but I've played a lot of hours of Madden <laughs> and therefore understand the game in a way that, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to if I hadn't played the sport, but I played it virtually. So I think one of the, the first tasks for the pickleball community is to analyze why people, early adopters of the sport, you know, those early fans are interested and see, you know, why they are connecting. And mm -hmm. once you better understand why those early adopters are connecting, then you might be able to build a broader fan engagement strategy out of it. So that's where I would start. I mean, do either of you have a sense of, you know, for those, for those early adopting fans that are coming, not just to play pickleball, but literally just to watch the, the games. I mean, do you get a sense of, of why they're there? Stacey, I'll let you take this one because I feel like, you know, a lot of the people that go to these, you know, sports as a fan or the, these matches as a fan or players as well. You know, yeah. I don't see a lot of people that just like, you know, I want to go watch pickleball today and, you know, like that aren't already players. So maybe Stacy, maybe you can give your thought on that. No, I think you hit the nail on the head, John. I think the biggest challenge, Ben, is you people want to play. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they necessarily want to watch it. Speaking mm -hmm. from my own experience, I like to watch because a lot of some of these players are my friends or I like to go my say my parents sign up for a 3 turn. I like to go watch them and support them. Uh, so you saying family in place, I think really strikes a chord because that's, that's important. Um, I'm, I really, I, I think if you can make it more of an entertainment factor, mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that I know the PPA, it's one of the pro tours, Ben, that's really trying to elevate the sport. Yeah. is trying to bring and hopefully with their new ownership, Tom Dundon as an NHL owner, he totally gets the entertainment factor. Mm -hmm. But I think making it more of more than just going to watch pickleball, uh, mm -hmm. but there's uh, something, you know, some some rowdy drama, like with some fans cheering for either side, mm -hmm. maybe some shooting you know, music and other other. Maybe there's some mascots on the court. I don't know. But uh, I think the entertainment factor, if we can, I think that would draw more people in. But right now, I think it's, we're at the stage where it's people playing and in between matches, I'll go watch the pros, see if I can learn something so, so I can go play better. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that is still a great way to drive fandom, right? Mm -hmm. Think about so many sports and, you know. As a, as a kid, you know, we, we all played so many different sports as a kid and we're, we're trying to get better. And so we watch the pros in order to mm -hmm. get better. So right. that's why I still think pickleball is operating from a position of strength because it's, you still have this strong participatory base that is watching for the very reason to help get better, right? Or maybe to support some friends along the way. So that's a, that's a great asset. I think part of, 
part of the challenge is going to be, you know, hooking other fans in for other reasons beyond just playing the sport. And, right. You know, one of the opportunities is, you know, you think about other, other comparable examples in sports. It's like, what will be the, the jewel event on the pickleball calendar for the year? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the one event that, you know what, as a fan, I don't think anything about pickleball until this event happens. Like for college basketball, both on the men's and women's side during March, it's the March Madness tournament. And that is the jewel event on the calendar. And of course, the avid college basketball fans are going to be watching that. But it also brings in all of these casual fans that may not even know anything about the teams, right? So mm -hmm. it's interesting to think about, you know, as the sport continues to grow as a, as a fan offering, you know, what could be that jewel event for pickleball that brings in not just the great players and all the participants, but also can bring in the, the casual fans that are looking for something a little bit more interesting and different from what they see on the traditional sports calendar. Yeah. And I think that that's definitely interesting. We have one of those events now, which, you know, the first time it happened was last year, major league pickleball where, yeah. you know, owners can come in and buy a team. Like now we have Gary Vaynerchuk, yep. um, bought a team, Brene Brown, you know, some other, you know, very influential people and they get to draft players. Right. Yep. So it's like, you know, there's 52 weeks out of the year, we have 50 mm -hmm. tournaments. Right. Yep. And a lot of the players play with the same people every single tournament. So it's like you, it kind of gets like monotonous, you know, and then you have that event, which was awesome because players are playing with people that they would never have played with. Yes. So I think, I think that that is an event that they've started and hopefully they'll keep growing. Like what you just, you know, said to make that the crown jewel. Mm -hmm. That's a great start, John, because it's a different format from the, all the other pickleball matches throughout the year. There's a celebrity angle to it, which can draw in new fans. And what I also think is important is building a brand around the place where the event takes, it occurs, mm -hmm. right? Where it's a, it's a special setting. There's, there's some, you know, traditions that are being created in that place. So it starts to stand for something more than just the pickleball that happens on the courts, mm -hmm. it stands for something much greater than that. Again, to use another college ex example, you know, where the, the college baseball world series is played, right? Um, Oma, it just sort of has this, it's, it has this sort of star quality mystique. That's a great term that, uh, no matter who's playing, you know, it's, it's still going to be an attraction. Mm -hmm. And so I think that'll be another key piece of that event going forward. Definitely. Then I want to drill okay. down. Oh, I was going to say, I want to drill down on this fan piece and how we can get more fans, but I want to take a step back and make sure we understand why that's important. Uh, so yeah. why, why should pickleball be looking to improve and elevate the fan experience and try and grow the fan base? Well, I think that number one, when you look at the, sustainability of a sport over the long mm -hmm. term. I think that having both a strong participatory side as well as a strong spectator side is mm -hmm. important for the overall growth of, of a sport, to have both. Um, mm -hmm. And look, the reality is, is that the financial growth on the business side can help support the overall ecosystem. And I think mm -hmm. that shouldn't be lost either. The other point that I would make is, you know, as, as the sport looks to grow and commercialize, that's not going to happen unless there's demand from fans anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like the sport is this, uh, this empty vessel and it's just going to make a ton of money going forward just because it's there, there's got to be fans that are demanding uh, a spectator experience. And so overall, as the sport continues to grow, I think it's, I think it's a good thing to focus on both growing the participatory base and the spectator base, because then you have an overall ecosystem where one is reinforcing the other and it starts to mm -hmm. be more sustainable. 
I know that right now there's so much great demand for courts, right? That's mm -hmm. one of the things that yeah. I've learned. And yes. part of the way that the infrastructure uh, issues get solved is if there is some, some commercialization, some commercial backing of the sport. And I think that, uh, that this sort of virtuous cycle of growth and participation, which can lead to growth in the spectator side of sport, that can all continue to feed one another to uh, ensure that the sport is sustainable going forward. Have there been sports that you've seen that maybe have fallen short on the spectator side and their growth has faltered because of it? I look at a sport like dodgeball. Mm -hmm. And let me give a lot of respect to dodgeball. Dodgeball led to an excellent Ben Stiller film, which <laughs> also gave rise to ESPN, the Ocho. The Ocho. Yep. So there, uh, there is some respect to be given to dodgeball. At the same time, I think that it is firmly in that category of a participatory sport, right? Mm -hmm. There aren't mass numbers of fans spending money and time to watch other people play dodgeball. That's just, that just hasn't mm -hmm. happened. Not to say it wouldn't, it just hasn't happened to date. Whereas I look at a sport like lacrosse. Mm -hmm. Lacrosse over the last couple of decades here in this country specifically has been on a meteoric participation ride, right? Not unlike mm -hmm. some of what we're seeing with pickleball right now. More kids across the country are playing lacrosse. And lacrosse has, over time, started to convert that participatory interest into a fan offering through a couple of professional leagues, right? And it's going to continue. It takes time. These things don't happen mm -hmm. overnight. <laughs> We're celebrating the NBA 75th anniversary right now. You know, in year 15 wow. or 20 of the NBA, it wasn't what it is today. So these things take time. And I think it's important to take the long view specifically with pickleball. But I, I see a, a more clear comparable to on the, on the ceiling to lacrosse than perhaps I do to dodgeball. Lacrosse to me would be a, a more best case scenario for pickleball, especially in the medium term. That's interesting. So what I'm hearing is if we want more courts, John, we need more fans and pickleball. And so we can have sustainable growth and uh, I don't have to wait in line to play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's great. And remember, let's think about one of the reasons why sports leagues and federations and teams, one of the key revenue streams for these organizations is sponsorship, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, corporate sponsors coming in to associate their brand with a sport in order to reach potential customers. And mm -hmm. that type of proposition where pickleball is a great participatory sport, as well as bringing together many fans that are interested in watching the sport, that's going to be just a much more compelling proposition to, to sponsors. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're definitely seeing more larger corporate um, entities coming mm -hmm. in. Like, you know, Hertz is, um, has come on board with one of the tours. And so you're starting to see, you know, cause you know, in the infancy of the sport we're in, it's like, okay, you know, a, uh, electrolyte company or, yep. you know, it's something small, but now you're starting to get these bigger corporate sponsors coming in, mm -hmm. um, that hopefully that will help drive us from ESPN three to ESPN two, you know, and, and, and yeah. up from there. That's exactly right. And, um, now, now that, uh, re remember, I usually don't do a lot of research before, um, <laughs> the podcast here, but I wanted to, for this one. And I, I was drawn specifically to one of your F1, uh, studies uh -huh. because yes. I'm a, I'm a race car driver myself. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm glued in. And you mm -hmm. had this Venn diagram, right. Of, of, uh, the innovation opportunities in the sport. One was like the sport itself, commercial, and then social impact. And in the middle is where the fans are, right? Yes. I think uh, pickleball right now is innovating the sport pretty quickly. But yes. I think maybe you can agree that the commercial and social impact side might be a little bit further behind. 
do you, yeah. if you were like running one of these organizations or just the sport in general, like what would you, I know you need all three, but what would you like kind of focus on? Yeah. First of all, John, you're an excellent student. I think that was very good. <laughs> well done. Well done. I, I would be laser focused on the commercial side of the sport. I think that as a overall product, there are lots of things to like about this sport. It's short, it's quick, it's fast. You know, those, those features of the sport on the court, I think, are in, in a good spot. Now the question is, how do we design a fan experience mm -hmm. around the sport? And then monetize that fan experience. So, you know, I'm thinking about the most important revenue stream in any sports business is media rights. So what I would be focused on is how can we produce a live pickleball match in a way that is exciting to watch via media, like a live stream or, or on TV, doesn't matter the screen in a way that it's exciting to watch, it's interactive, it's social. You know, I think about much of the activity around esports mm -hmm. and the explosion of other people watching other people play video games, right? And Twitch being an excellent example of that, where it's highly interactive. It's very social. And where I would be focused on is, is trying to innovate around how the, the pickleball matches are presented to fans. Like, I'd like to figure out how you can adapt a live pickleball match so that it's fascinating and interesting and fun to engage with on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you take a professional pickleball match and make it interesting and shareable and fun on TikTok? That's where I would be spending my time. And then once you get the, the live presentation of pickleball in a better spot, then it starts to say to media companies, hey, we've got a product that people are engaging with. Because people are engaging with this product, sponsors are interested. And because people are engaging with this product via media, they want to then come to our you know, annual event and buy a ticket and, and go actually see it in person. So I would really prioritize that fan experience via media around the live pickleball event. Yeah. And we're definitely, you know, I, I, I do agree, you know, the TikTok and the Twitch and kind of, you know, focusing on the younger generation too, right. As pickleball has kind of been like an older generation game. Now we're getting more young people on the courts. Um, yeah. But, you know, in YouTube where that's on YouTube now and, ESPN three, but you know, the numbers just don't really seem to be there to take the next mm -hmm. step, you know, yeah. um, when you're only having like one to 2000 people watching a YouTube stream, yeah. Yeah. it seems like those numbers are still a little amateur hour, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, right. So I think part of the challenge there is that how are you going to engage fans during a live stream? And let's not forget the NFL, of course, is uh, the best example of a sports media property in the industry. And what happens on a Sunday afternoon? People are glued to the NFL because they're monitoring their fantasy teams. They are monitoring whatever bets they may have made. Mm -hmm. There is another level of investment that fans have made beyond just following their favorite team that is driving them to spend time with the NFL. So that's another part of the fan experience with pickleball that you have to evaluate, right? How can we create opportunities for fans to feel more invested in the outcome? And if you do that, then they're going to spend more time with the sport via media as well. Yeah, I, I, I think betting would be would make it so much more fun. And I know that there was a company, I think, I don't know if there's they're still coming into it, but I think there is mm -hmm. a betting company, you know, compiling data to start yeah. um, a, a sport book. But I think yeah. that would drive a lot of interest. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, again, it, it goes back to the the fact that we've got to, we've got to rethink how pickleball is, is presented as a fan experience. And it's not, it's not going to cut it just to have, you know, the one camera on the match and then stream it to YouTube. There's, there's going to have to be more elements to the fan experience. Fantasy or betting is, is one of them. Um, you know, social interactions with fans, you know, perhaps with people, the players that are on the ground during the match. I mean, those are other opportunities to explore, but, but we got to get that right uh, in, in order for the sport to be a, a more compelling fan product. Mm-hmm. Is there any other common elements to the fan experience that we can draw from other sports? So you mentioned, you know, gambling mm-hmm. or the fantasy or the Madden. Is there any other good mm-hmm. examples that pickleball can draw from? You know, I think that certainly the place connections and then the the issues around uh, family connections that we talked about, I think those are, are very valuable to think about. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I know you wanted to talk about potentially some new technological opportunities for pickleball as well. And I look at the sport and I guess just by way of context, you know, you have to look back at, at, at sports history and, and media history as well. And oftentimes sports that have adapted well to new technologies have benefited greatly. So, Mm -hmm. you know, just to go way back, major league baseball was perfect for the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, you just turn on the radio and it was background. You know, it's just, it was almost mm-hmm. perfect. And, and the announcers had a great way of dramatizing the game, even though you couldn't see it. Mm-hmm. Turns out the NFL was perfect for television, right? Just absolutely the perfect sport for television. Um, you know, just the way that the field was set up Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, just sort of, it was, it was a, it was a perfect use case for television. Fast forward a little bit later, you know, you look at technologies like social media, and the NBA has been perfect for social media because mm-hmm. of the emphasis on short clips, highlight dunks, um, and the fact that you know all the stars in the NBA can also connect directly with fans via their social media accounts. Mm-hmm. You know, we are in the very, very early stages of, as you have seen, what's called the the Web three era, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a it's an umbrella term for a number of different technologies that are enabled by blockchain. And these technologies could include things like NFTs or non-fungible tokens, could include the uh, vehicle of decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs, right? Mm -hmm. Cryptocurrency falls in to this bucket as well. And so this is a a newer era of technologies. And it's interesting to think about how pickleball can start to innovate and take advantage of some of these technologies, especially since we're so early. The reason why I mention that is because what's fascinating about the ethos of Web3 is it's largely about the decentralized internet. It's all decentralized. It's community controlled. Mm -hmm. And in pickleball, it's a very community driven ethos, right? It's, it's, you know, we're, we're all as a community involved in the growth of this sport. So it, it brings up some interesting questions about how pickleball going forward might use technologies like NFTs or might engage in structures like DAOs in order to bring the community together via technology to invest in the growth of the sport and perhaps move it forward in a constructive way where everyone gets a piece of the success. So, you know, John, to your to your question about on the commercial side, I think priority number one would be to uh, innovate around how pickleball is presented live as a media fan product. And then I think the second priority for for anyone that's in the pickleball business is to get very detailed about the possibilities within Web3 and what the the applications could be for pickleball going forward. Because taking advantage of new technology, as I mentioned, has been a proven strategy 
for other sports to engage fans and grow as a business. I think I need to jump on my NFT DAO <laughs> and crypto education right now. I own a couple. Yeah, of it, yeah, it 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 is worth. Listen, I'm a I'm a technologist first and foremost. I love new technology. Every new technology has positives and negatives. Every new technology is, um, you know, is, 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 could either disrupt the world for the good or for the better or for the worse. Right. Um, I, I try to take a very pragmatic view and, and look at these technologies and say, Hmm, you know, how could these be applied to improve the fan experience, to create new business models? And I think if you approach it with that type of lens, then you might be able to arrive on some fascinating solutions for the future of the sport. Mm. And I know we don't have you. I for... think that's a great. Go ahead, Stace. I was going to just say that's a great perspective. Something that makes me think outside my box. Uh, so I'm mm -hmm. really glad we had you on, Ben, because mm -hmm. just taking tackling the sport from a whole different perspective is this is so valuable. Ah, it's a, it's a it's a pleasure, and I, I'm super excited for this sport. I I think that the. The community is strong. People are clearly passionate about it, which is so much mm -hmm. fun to see. Um, the name, I think, is a real asset. I know there's been a lot of mm -hmm. debate about it. I think it attracts attention. And mm -hmm. look, in the end, especially on the fan side, in the end, this is a game of time and money. That's, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. And I don't mean to be too simplistic, but pickleball, if it wants to succeed as a fan product, is now going to be battling with other sports, with Netflix, with Fortnite, whatever the case may be, for people's time and attention and, mm -hmm. and, and money at the end of the day. So the question is, you know, how can pickleball adapt its product, take advantage of new technologies to capture time and, and money from fans. And the good news is, is that you're already operating from such a strong base of people who have passion for the sport. So, you know, is it a fad? I don't, I don't see it as a fad. I don't see it as a fad. I see it as something that uh, is going to be here for a long time. And by the way, I'm, I'm just excited for, for the growth of the sport. And, you know, I know a lot of people are talking about the Olympics mm -hmm. being, you know, on the roadmap. And I think that's great. I would push for, as sort of a pinnacle for the sport, a pickleball World Cup, mm. because that signals to the world that this sport is on a global stage. It's not going to share that stage with anyone else. And it's the event that every single pickleballer throughout the world wants to play in and wants to take home the trophy for. So, mm -hmm. yes, I think the Olympics would be great, but I'd love to see a pickleball World Cup down the line as well. I've never thought about that, but that's genius because I'm a soccer player myself. And, you know, the World Cup is something that everything, everyone t tunes into around the world. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, listen, you still play soccer. There's still soccer in the Olympics. Mm hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. you know any, any soccer fan will tell you, would you rather win the World Cup or would you rather win an Olympic gold medal? Yeah. You know, World Cup all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, if you know, that that to me is is the pinnacle. And, it, you know, it's it, it, if it happens, it'll take time. It'll take a lot of time. But in a world of new technology where you can build an audience like never before, you can go global like never before, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. So I like to focus on the optimistic view. And, you know, I think that, uh, I think there's a lot of exciting possibilities here for the sport. Yeah. And I, uh, I know we can't keep you all day. I could talk to you for hours. I'm sure Stacy could too. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Definitely. But uh, what drew us to you was the fact that you said that pickleball needs a Michael Jordan. Yes. How, what, what should, what should we look for in that player? Right? Like if you're a pro player on the tour, how does that person need to stand out like a Michael Jordan, a Tiger Woods, you know, et cetera? Yeah. Well, if we use some of those examples as just cases to analyze, what do they share in common? Number one is pure dominance, mm -hmm. pure dominance, right? It's not just having mm -hmm. like 
you know, a certain level of talent, it's, it's, it's dominance. You know, people are attracted to athletes who are dominant in their field. And mm -hmm. I think that's first and foremost. Secondly, and arguably most importantly, you know, beyond the, the, the dominance on the, on the court is having the personality that stands out, you know, that has a bit of an edge and that people can very clearly connect with either in a positive or I think equally fine in a negative or controversial way. Mm -hmm. Right. You look at Michael Jordan. I mean, he was dominant in his field and also known for, you know, being incredibly competitive, you know, and a really, really, really tough player. And so, you know, people mm -hmm. identify with that. So, you know, what I would be looking for is, you know, someone who definitely has the, has the skills and has the track record to be, uh, you know, so that they're dominant on the court, but also that they have a, a personality that people are either gonna love and and or dislike and i and i think both mm -hmm. are both are fine in a marketplace of attention where you got to attract attract people c consistently mm -hmm. so ben are you going to be following and studying pickleball a little more in your professional time i am yes i've always been fascinated by emerging sports i remember in my first book the elusive fan my co-authors and i did a case study on paintball, mm -hmm. which was having its moment uh, in the early 2000s. So I've always been fascinated by emerging sports. And I always keep in mind that, you know, there was a time in the US where the three major sports in this country were what? Boxing, horse racing, and baseball. Mm -hmm. And things have changed in a lot mm -hmm. of respects. Things have changed. You know, if you ask me what the top three sports are today in this country, I don't think either of you would have boxing or horse racing in your answer. Nope. Right. So that's the other piece of this that to me is fascinating, which is this this industry is always evolving. And, you know, as, as new generations come up as participants and fans, you don't know what things are going to look like in 10 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this uh, this will be another sport that I'll monitor and see how the fan experience evolves and i'm excited for for what the future may hold for the sport and for the passionate leaders of the sport like you two <laughs> well thank, thank you, you. any any final questions john we we really appreciate you ben this has been such a interesting conversation uh very illuminating and i hope we can pick your brain some more because i have a feeling you'll have some great insights as the sport continues to grow. And hopefully we can say pickleball is in those top three uh, sports in America one day. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks again for having me on. And I appreciate the opportunity to think through a new sport and how it might continue to break out as, as both a participatory option as well as a, as a business. So I wish uh, everyone in the pickleball community well, and again, excited to see how things evolve going forward. Nice. Well, Ben, any final thoughts, John? Um, well, I mean, I, I'll go way over time if I uh, keep going. So, uh, <laughs> Ben, uh, we always go out in a certain way. We always cheers the camera. So if you have a cup, if you, you know, if you don't buy you, that's okay. Yeah. Fist bumps are okay. Fist bump is okay, but we always <laughs> cheers the camera on the way out. So thank you for joining us on the Pickler podcast. Uh, Very Pickler good. out. <laughs>